What's up, aspiring machine learning engineers, data scientists, and general data maniacs? Data carpenters, is that a word yet? Anyway, I was asked to cover the topic of resumes and CVs for people that want to get themselves a job in the ever growing world of data science. And I understand that making a CV can be a very confusing process. Therefore, I will walk you through my own CV and share all the feedback that I got during my interviews. And this will surely help you create a resume that gets you your dream job or an internship, and most importantly, a blue thumb up from your next boss. Ah, that was kinda cringy. Ah, fuck it, I hope you liked it. Let's jump right in with my resume. I will walk you through it and then we can discuss what I considered when writing it. I will also mention several things that you might want to write about when you have less relevant content that you can put on it. This is the last CV I used to get my current job and it did work pretty well for getting through the screening process. Here it is, it ain't much, but it's honest work. Tip number one, keep it short. Keep it on one page and don't fill it like the small print of that goddamn user agreement from Facebook. I know you've done and seen enough things to fill several books, but put yourself into the shoes of someone hiring in a big company. They look at several hundred of them and only want to have the highlights. If they find you interesting, they will give you more than enough time in your cover letter and the interviews themselves to go through all your relevant perks. This brings me to what you should definitely attach to every application. A cover letter, also called a motivational letter, where you go into much more detail on why you think you are the one and only candidate for this job. The next employee of the month, the messiah. Or maybe don't put that into the cover letter, but make them think that. If you want to go through my cover letter template, let me know in the comments and we can surely do this in another video. Also attach your degrees and reference letters from past employers. Look, I know many won't read them, but those that do really like that you send them and it just makes a good complete impression. Back to the CV thing. It is really important to notice all the buzzwords, flying around here buzzing and advocating your skill to machines. When you think about the CV, be aware that the first pair of eyes on it are rarely human. This means that the software that is pre-scanning your resume to reduce the load the actual HR people have to do, they are mostly checking boxes like years of experience, technologies, or for an example, we are looking for a candidate with a master's degree and three years of experience in Python. Let's go through it from top to bottom. The first thing should be your name and the profession you're going for. I put data scientists to set the right tone from the beginning. Profile images are not common everywhere, so only use where needed. This one is a bit shitty and I had to make it myself during the disease that should not be named on YouTube times, but get a proper photographer if you can. Below I put all relevant information to contact me. I also put my address. While it's not that useful, it tells them in what city you live and one interview I even got on short notice because I lived close by and he noticed. So there is some good in the details. Quite honestly, looking at it again, it may be a bit too spacious and one could maybe also put a link to LinkedIn. Many people love LinkedIn and I don't know why I didn't put it. Phone number, email and also GitHub are very recommended. I got told twice how nice it was in the interview. They could scan Git immediately and we could talk about some cool projects on there and you know, it shows them something. The skill section. This may be more of an optical wow and showcases again my experience short and easy. Languages can be a big thing for data scientists, especially when working with non-English data, so be sure to make use of that in general for all jobs, I think. Now let's talk about the actual text and content. I recommend structuring it into four parts. Education, programming, experience and projects. How you order them depends really on what you think is your strong asset. Education is a must section if you hold any bachelor or master like degree. I chose to save the space below for more relevant projects, but feel free to add your subjects, courses, etc. if you have enough space. Programming. I personally like the bar chart visualization and again it is a great place to place more buzzwords. If you want to tailor your CV to a specific job, it is also relatively easy to restructure. I put here from top to bottom my best skills. Python, NumPy, TypeScript, SQL, Git. I would make sure to list mostly relevant skills that will be needed for the type of job you're applying for. But general software engineering skills like 
Git, Sonar Cube, SQL, etc. should always have a place. What I forgot here in hindsight are DevOps tools like Jenkins, Airflow and Ansible and others that can be a huge plus. Feels like a great place to put a joke about Switzerland, but we don't joke about work here. Your biggest section should probably be the experience, because people usually know what you learned at university. Your working experience gives you a more personal edge. I put here only relevant work experience for the data world, but it can also include student jobs if you have space. Put some bullet points and in short give them what you worked with and on, potentially also put the team size because I got asked about that more often than expected. Last but not least, projects. As with working experience, it is a great plus to showcase your personal edge and show them why you are the right person for the job. As you can see, I cut everything to one line because there really is not that much space on one PDF. Consider putting a link into your PDF for everything that they might want to check out. PDF is a great format and make use of the link feature. They really like clicking around. If they get lost clicking around your links, that also makes you a lot more memorable and, you know, stalkers are much more likely to contact you again. A mistake I made here for sure is that I ordered the projects in the wrong chronological order. This confused one person and really your most recent accomplishment should always be the first line. If you like my particular CV template, by the way, I wrote it in LaTeX and you can find a link to it in the descriptions below. I hope there are a few lessons you could learn from this little sheet of paper. Once you crafted it, the world will be yours. Then once you show up at the interview, be sure to be prepared. If you want to know how my experience was, make sure to check out my video on the machine learning engineer interview process and questions that they will surely ask. Let me know in the comments what is good and more importantly bad about the CV. Please grill me, it will surely help others too. This has been with me for the week. Be sure to like and subscribe so this video can reach more people. We'll see each other next week. It was a pleasure.